that finally, I think, covers everything on the outside of the pack. Uh, since this is out here, we'll talk about the Cascade Mountain Tech carbon fiber trekking poles. This is a neoprene rubber up here that's pretty comfortable and then cork and rubber at the top and it has a strap. And at the bottom, this is something, I'll probably do like a PSA video on this pretty soon. I had no idea. I had always used trek poles without the rubber tip on the end, just using the little metal tip. And I had no idea the damage they do to trails. At Philmont, they asked that everyone put the rubber tips on. And I noticed on the trail, most people didn't. And that would have been me because that's how I've always done it is just use the metal tip. But as you hike through the trails, you got a lot of time, especially on the rocky trails, the older trails that haven't been smoothed out. If you don't look down, you're going to trip over something or stub a toe or hurt yourself. So you're always looking down at the trail and you can see all kind of holes along the edge of the trail on each side and what appears to be pretty significant erosion on either side of the, the walking path on the trail where people are hiking with trekking poles and digging these metal tips into the ground. So just putting the rubber tips on is very helpful. Now this one has a tip that I actually found in one of the camps we stayed at. It was sitting on the ground. This has the original tip, rubber tip on it, and you can see it wore completely through. It lasted about four days on the trail, I think, and it wore a hole slap through it because uh, it was completely covering the metal tip. So this metal tip ended up touching the ground part of the trip, but at least I left the rubber on to give it a larger surface area. So it dig in a little bit, but then it spread out that impact. The way I carry these, all right, I used to just put my hand straight through and hold on. And I guess that's okay, that's how a lot of people do it. And then I figured out if you come up underneath and then reach back onto it, I wasn't even holding up here on the cork grip. I just kind of let it sit here. So the big deal with doing it this way is you don't have to grip the trekking pole. So climbing or coming downhill, you don't have to have a death grip on it because my hands would get tired doing that. This way, I was often hiking with my hands just loosely on the trekking poles and uh, I really liked that. So uh, it worked out really well. It's supporting the weight here and I'm not gripping it at all. So coming downhill or going uphill, either way, I didn't have to grip the poles. And that nice little neoprene ledge there gave me a little something to kind of hold on to. So if, if we're going uphill, I was hiking like this. If we're going downhill, I didn't hold them rigid. I kind of swing it forward, but I could just kind of let it pivot and touch. And then as I walk up to it, pivot and touch. And it, it was very convenient, I like that. These poles are about seven or eight ounces a piece. Uh, which basically cut in half the weight that I had been carrying for my old aluminum trekking poles. The old ones had a little bit of a spring suspension, so they didn't have an impact and jar your hand. And honestly, it was a little annoying sometimes hiking and hearing the, the sound that it would make when it hit. But, uh, but they were light and they did what they needed to and it worked out fantastic. When we would get to camp, if we were putting up the tarp, oftentimes we'd either use mine or uh, one of the other guys that had similar poles, we'd flip them upside down and use it to support, you know, two of them, one at each end of the tarp to support it in kind of an A-frame fashion. Uh, really liked them. And I grew up hiking without trekking poles, thinking they were silly and extra weight. After this trek, I'm telling you, I won't backpack without them if I can help it, especially in a rocky area, because so many times I would lose my balance and the trekking pole would save me and especially climbing up hills, being able to kind of dig in and get some, get some pull, get some power out of my upper body to help keep the momentum was incredibly useful. I highly recommend using trekking poles, especially for someplace rugged like Philmont with a lot of vertical where you're climbing and descending. And these Cascade Mountain Tech, we had three sets in our crew, uh, one that I purchase for our man and then two sets that that Cascade Mountain Tech sent for us to review. These are not twist lock trekking poles. These are lever lock trekking poles. Once we figured out the right tension on these, um, these were flawless. We, we all wore through, oh, this is the other one, we all wore through the little rubber tips. But you know, aside from that, uh, the only issue we had on the trail was as we'd hike, they would get shorter and shorter. 
and that was because we didn't have the locks tight enough. There's an adjuster right here, you know, lefty loosey, righty tighty. You, you can go ahead and crank it down tight and then really struggle to get that lock in, and it's plastic. I was afraid I'd break something, so I wanted to ease into it. So that feels tight enough. I'd try it if it started to, to collapse. I'd open it up and do just like an eighth of a turn or maybe a quarter of a turn sometimes and try it again and eventually you know after a day or two got it to where they weren't collapsing they were holding length everything worked fantastic uh, very pleased with how those poles work if you don't use trekking poles i highly recommend you try it and if you want some lightweight carbon fiber collapsible trekking poles these are a fantastic value, and I don't think you're going to find a better deal out there. So go check out Cascade Mountain Tech. We'll have a link in the description for those as well.